In this episode, we'll look at handling Stripe webhooks in our Dino Edge functions. Now in Stripe, there's a lot of asynchronous actions. So for example, you create an invoice, you send that invoice to a customer, and then after some time in the future, the customer will pay the invoice. And now Stripe will notify, notify you about that paid invoice via a webhook. And in order to receive those webhooks, we can create a Superbase Edge function and make it publicly accessible so that Stripe can send post requests to us to our Edge function. So I created a new Stripe account here um, and we can start off as a developer kind of in test mode and we can start off with um, testing in local environment. So the way we, we do that is we need to download the Stripe CLI and then we need to um, log in, call Stripe login, pairing code here, ideal worked pretty famed. Let's double uh, check that here, NGH functions, ideal work, yes. So let's say uh, access granted, uh, great. And so we can close that window. And then in the next step, what we can do is we can um, listen and forward uh, our um, uh, webhook notification to our local host. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new function. So um, we say superbase functions new, and we'll just call it Stripe webhook. And then let's open this up in um, VS Code. And so we have our Stripe um, webhook handler here. And we'll uh, modify this to be our webhook handler. Now, in order to use uh, Stripe with Dino, we can look at um, the Stripe team has put together some um, Dino examples that use the Stripe node library. And there's one handy example here for um, webhook signing. So that's what we'll be using. And we can um, go ahead and do um, this here. So we'll import from um, ESM.sh and then we'll need our um, Stripe API key. And here for Dino, we'll need to specify the um, create fetch HTTP client as well as the uh, crypto provider. So let's copy those um, pieces out into our um, edge function. And uh, we'll put that in here. Uh, 8.2.10. Uh, we likely want to use the, the newest version. So if we look at um, Stripe node um, here, the Node.js library, we can just quickly double check. So we have version 11.2.0. Um, so let's make sure we're getting 11.2.0. Uh, and you might have to, to cache that, but now we can see we're using um, the newest versions here. Uh, and then we'll need to set up our Stripe API key. So what we can do is we'll just create a um, new file uh, we'll create a .env uh, file here and make sure you don't uh, commit your .env file um, into uh, GitHub. So in our git ignore, we're going to add .env, save that. And now we can see um, this isn't being committed. So that's good. Uh, and then what we can do is we want the Stripe API key put that in here and we'll just need to find our um, Stripe API key. Uh, let's close this out and go to uh, developers. And I believe we can, so this needs to be our secret key. Uh, we can copy that and paste that in here. Uh, obviously secret keys, keep them secret. Don't show them to anyone, uh, especially in life mode. Okay, so now we have um, that set up. So we'll do uh, here hello from Stripe webhook. Uh, and then our serve will, um, 
we'll put our code in here for handling um, handling the webhook. Okay, so we can go back into um, the example. So in our handler, we'll need to get the um, signature from uh, the request header. So we'll want to verify that only, you know, actual legitimate um, requests are being sent from that are being sent from Stripe uh, will be handled. So we get our um, signature out. So let's get that in here. So we're getting um, the signature from the request. Let's call this request here. And then we want to uh, uh, try and get our um, received event. So let's do um, so the first step, we verify. Uh, so we get the text from the request. And then we'll verify that, um, you know, the request is properly signed and actually originated from um, Stripe. So we can do that here, uh, we're getting our body, we have our signature um, as well. And then we'll also need an our environment var variables, the Stripe uh, webhook signing secret. Um, and when we are running this locally, we will get our uh, Stripe webhook signing secret from um, the CLI. So if we go back to webhooks, we say test in local environment, and we'll just um, copy uh, this one here. So in our case, um, let's see, Stripe listen, and um, we'll need to forward to, let's go back here. So locally, our function will be on port 54321 uh, slash functions slash v1. So let's uh, copy this one here. So 54321. Um, let's put that in. And so now we can see we have a, a webhook signing secret. So let's copy this. We can stop this for now. We'll just uh, we just did this to get the signing secret. And again, do keep um, your signing secret secret, uh, especially in live mode. Um, okay, great. So we have our signing secret, uh, and now we uh, yeah we have the crypto provider from above, and uh, we can do this. So we can see that you know if there's an error, we'll uh, return a new. Um, error response. And so otherwise, what we can do is we can um, extract kind of the um, event here. So the received event, um, let's just do this one here. I'll just say um, received event. So we'll just uh, print out the, um, well, we don't actually need to print out the event. What we can do is we can just say, um, we'll console log out. So console.log the um, received event. And then what we're uh, going to say is just, um, we'll just return, okay, true. So for, for Stripe, what's important is we need to return uh, a 200 response. Um, this could be empty, so we can just say, okay, true. So this is the response that's being sent back to um, Stripe. Uh, and so that is roughly um, the gist of it. So now what we can do is we can serve our function um, locally and we will need to pass in our um, .env variable. Uh, and so in order for test things locally, uh, there is a couple of things we need. So we need to serve our function. Um, we need to not verify the JWT uh, because we're getting a different signature from Stripe and we uh, need a public uh, endpoint to expose that. Um, and then we'll need to provide um, 
uh, .env file. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and do that. And we called ours um, Stripe Webhook. So we'll need to modify this a little bit. So Stripe Webhook and our .env file is in, uh, is in Superbase, Stripe, uh, Superbase functions, Stripe webhook dot env. So that should be it. We're um, uh, so first of all, we need to start up our local uh, Superbase stack. So make sure that this is up and running. There we are. And now we can go ahead and we can serve our function locally with our secrets. So we can see the watcher process has started. Hello from Stripe webhook. Uh, and so now in a separate um, terminal, we'll need to listen uh, to our um, webhooks. So we forward the webhooks um, to our localhost function. And then what we can do is in a third window, and a third window will just trigger um, Payment intent succeeded. So let's go uh, that. So we're triggering. We can see um, our events here. So we have actually a couple events coming in. We have a chart succeeded, a payment intent succeeded, and a payment intent um, created. And then here we can see we have our received events. So we have um, this event here. Um, this is our uh, charge object here. Um, so this is our charge succeeded. And then I believe we have um, a couple more events here. Yeah, so we can see these events correspond to um, the different events down here. Now in a last step, let's go ahead and um, deploy our function. So we can call uh, Superbase functions deploy, we will need to set no verify JWT and then Stripe webhook. And now we can uh, inspect our deployment in the Superbase dashboard. So here we can see we have our um, webhook URL. So let's go ahead and copy this out and set it up in our Stripe account. So we'll need to set a new endpoint URL. So this is this year, and uh, we'll say ng edge functions, uh, events on my account, and we'll um, just select, let's just select all events. Great, and then uh, say add events. And then add uh, endpoint. We'll just need to get our um, signing secret. So let's copy this and we'll need to update that in our um, .end file because now we have, uh, we're not using the local signing secret, but um, the actual one that we, that we have um, deployed. Uh, and then lastly, we will um, set our secrets. So from our uh, .end file, we can set the secrets and we have the secret set. And so now what we can do is, um, let's say um, we can maybe create a new customer, create new uh, tester test, uh, and let's add the customer. And so if we look at our function invocations, uh, we can see here our function invocation uh, from, uh, we can see from Stripe, user agent uh, Stripe, and we can see we replied with a 200 okay. And we can quickly look at our locks here. We can see um, this whole event being locked which is our uh, customer object. Great, so that is all working.
Now, one question I've seen from the community is um, folks would like to better understand when to use edge functions versus, say, Next.js API routes or Next.js edge functions. Uh, kind of, you know, how do they differ? When to use which one? Um, and also debugging and logging. Uh, so, yeah, debugging and logging, um, I think we covered kind of a little bit doing this. Um, locally so when we deploy our um, edge function we can then go into our superbase uh, dashboard app.superbase.io and we can look at our edge functions and so in in deployment we can uh, get some good metrics here um, we can look at kind of invocation details um, here so we can see kind of what um, invocations uh, sort of happened what happened here we can see there was kind of no uh, username for example for this function and then we can also look at um, the logs now this is something that we're working on uh, improving further now in terms of when to use um, you know superbase edge functions versus you know next.js edge functions or, or say that so for example um, you know we have subscription uh, payment starter is is a popular one um, that uses superbase and obviously this also has um, webhook handling and here the webhook handling is um, simply in in API routes so you can see this here webhooks um, and so my kind of general rule of thumb is, you know, if you are building a website and you're using something like Vercel uh, or Netlify or, you know, what have you, Dino Deploy, then obviously, you know, it makes sense to keep your functions kind of within um, that project. So you already have a provider, you have a runtime and, um, you know, just use that, keep it close within your project. And, you know, that's completely fine. Now, the reason we've built Superbase Edge Functions is that there were people, um, you know, for example, building uh, Flutter apps where they were building uh, applications, you know, say uh, Expo, you know, or Flutter uh, applications. And so in this case, they don't actually have, you know, an existing provider where they deploy things because these applications are directly installed on, on the user's device. And so in this case, you know, they wanted to still be able to handle, um, you know, functions. So for example, create like uh, a payment sheet um, information, you know, process a webhook. Um, and so, you know, they have Superbase to use with their React Native or their, um, their Flutter projects. Uh, and then it makes sense, you know, to use um, kind of the Stripe Edge functions because you have everything close by. Um, and, you know, the Stripe Edge functions also uh, integrate with kind of the authorization um, headers. And, and so, you know, with auth and with storage and kind of that um, makes it quite easy to go together. So if, if that's something you're working on, you know, um, for example, you're generating OG images and you're, you know, saving them to storage, we have episodes on that, uh, then you can use that. Or, you know, um, if you're using mobile projects where you don't have an existing hosting provider, then Superbase Edge Functions is also a great choice. Uh, Felix, I hope this uh, helped a little bit with your question. And thanks for tuning in and see you next time.